the masking is a pretty big departure for you. I mean, you've been on TV, but what made you want to get that costume on and hit the stage and sing? I think it was just the right time. I think, you know, I, I you know, I'd known that I'd wanted to do this show and had offers and opportunities to do it, but the timing was never right um, until this season came along. And, you know, I, I finally have found myself in a position where, you know, I have a, a supportive and loving husband who was there for me. And um, I, I was just in a much better place to where I could say, yes, let's go push myself a little bit and have some fun. And I'm so glad that I did it. I had an experience of a lifetime. Did he know that you were doing the show and who in your circle, your family, your friends knew that you were going to be doing this? He did. He had to because he's he's actually a strong vocalist. So he he helped me out quite a bit. Um, and also, I just needed somebody to help me with my confidence and to to tell me that I could do it. Um, and then just my immediate family. I think I just always love keeping them in the loop of what I'm I'm working on and including them in and in, in as much as I can on my life. Um, and then obviously I've had to play coy to a few people who do watch the show and and sort of spotted me and or heard my voice and, and recognized it. Speaking of your husband training you or giving you some vocal coaching, uh, how is that? And are you a big singer in your free time? Do you like sing around the house, sing in the shower? My my singing capabilities are in the car and in the shower, and they're not great. So um, for me to say yes to something like this was definitely uncomfortable and and sort of out sort of out of line, but also in the best and most beautiful way, something that I needed. And and I'm so glad that I went through it. Um, I let loose a little bit and learned something new about myself, and really just leaned into it. Well, shifting gears a little bit, you're a huge advocate for mental health. Can you tell us more about the TEAMS Act and why you wanted to get behind it? Yeah, so the TEAMS Act stands for Targeting Emotional and Mental Stability. And essentially what it is, is we are reallocating a portion of money that the government already gives to universities for on-campus suicide prevention mm -hmm. and giving them directly to student-athlete resources for their mental health. I think right now, when you look at the overall landscape of, of student-athletes, um, these athletes are under immense pressures through NIL, through the transfer portal, through sports betting, um, so many added pressures that they haven't had over the last few years, and they need help. Um, and that's something my foundation is really priding itself on. I think that's great, because even when I went to school, there wasn't a lot of conversation around mental health or even that many resources. And I went back to my university for a reunion and saw all this signage about mental health care, mental health this, mental health that. And it was just so refreshing to see. And I'm sure there's so many people in my class or that I went to school with that could have really used that, myself included, everyone, you know? So it's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Stigma is still a real thing, not only in the mm -hmm. athletic community, but on campus too. And mm -hmm. it's hard to talk and confide in your peers that you're struggling. And um, the more that we can continue to, to tear down that stigma and, and um, really empower people to seek help and to talk mm -hmm. about their problems is is going to be important. Yeah, it's great. It's great that you're doing that. Uh, you're also coming up on your one year wedding anniversary with your husband. Yes. What are you guys going to do to celebrate? I think we're going to go back up to Big Sur where we got engaged and and have a, a great romantic fun anniversary trip. And um, it's been the best year of my life, and I am so excited for future years to come with him. He's the best human being for me, possibly, I could have ever imagined. That's sweet. You two are also working on becoming parents, and you delve yes. into that on your Daddyhood podcast. How's that going, and what's the status on everything? Yeah, um, we are still very much in our planning process. We are going through some, some last rounds of health checks with our surrogate. Um, these women are incredible, but they're putting their bodies through just to help us have a family and um we're still very much in the process and and also taking a lot of pride in, in helping other people, you know, that are navigating the ins and outs of fertility. Yeah, you talk pretty candidly about it. And I feel like it's important to see and hear that and the different perspectives that you bring onto the podcast. What made you want to talk about this and, and be so public about it? Just, you know, when I first, when my husband and I first started looking around of like how we wanted to build our family, there wasn't a lot of information. And, and the more that I started speaking on my own struggles with my, you know, I, I didn't have any sperm at first. And um, the more I started vocalizing that and humanizing it, the more people were confiding in me being like, yeah, same. And I just realized there was a stigma around it. And there was a shame around fertility. And it felt so isolating that I need to talk about this, not only for the men out there, but for the women, they 
they bear the burden of a lot of um, fertility struggles when in fact it's the men, you know, a lot of men are, you know, to blame in 50% of the equation as well. So um, having this platform that I have, not only for same sex couples, but just for couples out there in general to speak on IVF and fertility struggles has been something that I've really, you know, leaned into. Have you gotten any advice about fatherhood from your bachelor nation? friends and family, anything from like Nick Vile or Jared and Ashley or any of them? No, you know, I, the only one that I really sort of keep in touch with is, is Chris Harrison. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's obviously always been somewhat of a father figure navigating that franchise and the ins and outs of the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Um, he's just a good, good human being. And lastly, what's, what's next for you? You have a lot of things going on, but what can yeah. you tease? Um, I don't know. I just think weirdly the mass singer was a fun project for me to sort of yeah. dip my toe back into to being on camera and sort of saying like, hey, um, you know, I'm I'm coming back and I'm excited to share some of the projects and some of the, the things that I've been working on and um just knowing that there's a lot of work that we can do in the entertainment landscape and knowing that I'm sort of on the right track and, and finding my lane within my communities.